Hello and welcome to a new edition of The Big Picture, the show where we try to take you beyond news events and understand the larger processes that are driving it. What does the current moment in Indian politics represent? This year marked BJP's greatest political and ideological triumph. But the recent state elections have been a bit of a setback. The BJP got lesser seats than it had expected in Haryana. Its attempts to form the government in Maharashtra failed. And we now have a coalition government of the Shiv Sena, the NCP and the Congress in office in Maharashtra. It also lost by polls in Bengal recently, a state which it has been working on quite uh, assiduously. A couple of state elections, Jharkhand and Delhi, are coming up. Where does the BJP stand now? Where is national politics? To discuss some of these issues, I have with me a very special guest. Nilanjan Sarkar is Assistant Professor at Ashoka University, a visiting fellow at Centre for Policy Research and one of the most insightful commentators on Indian politics. Thank you so much, Nilan, for joining us. Thank you for having me. Uh, Nilan, as I, as I said, uh, this year was BJP's year. Uh, Modi came back, Narendra Modi came back uh, with a spectacular victory. And it almost seemed like uh, their... Uh, consecutive, their victories in elections would, would just seemed inevitable. And before the state assembly elections too, everybody just wrote off the opposition. Uh, but it hasn't all gone according to script for the BJP. What do you think is the big takeaway from Haryana and Maharashtra? So, I mean, if we take a little bit of a longer view, we see that in some ways, what was against the run of play, if we were to assume that all elections were going the same way, is the national elections themselves. Actually, coming into the national elections, as you'll remember, Rajasthan, Madhya Pradesh, Chhattisgarh, places where the BJP had been strong, the BJP lost. And just six, you know, a few months later, it turned around things in the national election. One of the major questions we have is that, is there some kind of a de-alignment now happening between state elections and national elections? It is clear that Modi is incredibly popular. He's sort of the unquestioned most popular leader in India, certainly at the national level. The problem is it cuts different ways once you go down to the state level. If we look at, um, you know, state like Haryana or Maharashtra, local regional leaders who are charismatic in and of themselves, Dushyant Chotala, Thakre, uh, the two powers, I guess, in, uh, in Maharashtra, they played outsized roles in sort of bargaining against the BJP. And those are states in which the BJP doesn't necessarily have charismatic leaders at the state level that are leading their coalitions, right? Um, so I think this form of charismatic politics that we're starting to see come up all across the board is creating sort of very, very funny, uh, a, a funny de-alignment between national and state elections. Um, the BJP today has... Um, a dominant position all across Indian politics, particularly at the national level. At the state level, it's facing a number of challenges from locally powerful regional leaders. This looks a lot like what uh, many political scientists refer to as the second party system in the late 1960s, when Indira Gandhi was still very popular, but the BJP started to lose state elections to the syndicate, to, to sort of locally popular regional leaders. The Congress did. Uh, the Congress did, sorry. And, uh, in that situation, you saw very, very similar responses. Um, uh, building a campaigns around Indira Gandhi's charisma, uh, the use of central schemes to reach the voter, uh, the scrapping of corporate donations at that time to hurt the opposition's political financing that looks very similar to the kinds of things that we're seeing uh, for the BJP and how it relates to the state parties. But again, you know, I, I think that when you have this kind of de-alignment, state elections that are competitive, national elections which are not, um, you end up creating a certain kind of friction between national politics and state politics. And that's sort of what we're seeing today. Uh, do you think we can go beyond that uh, and explain it not just in terms of local leaders who are popular and charismatic, uh, but see it in terms of a pushback from India's state uh, given India's federal arrangement, to a very strong centre? So, I, I mean, plausibly, I, I think so. I, but I, I think that we also have to be careful to look at the set of characters that are involved in each kind of election, right? I mean, it's not just the fact that certain regional leaders are charismatic. It's also that they genuinely offer an alternative. I think part of the challenge for any party, 
uh, at the national level in 2019 is that who was Modi's alternative, right? Um, Rahul Gandhi was not popular, the Congress party was not popular. We see even in these state elections, the Congress party may not be as popular as, 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 one would, as they would have hoped in Maharashtra, for instance. Um, so, I think we are also looking at systems that have very, very different competitive characters. So, insofar, and this is where I do agree, insofar as a voter registers some frustration with the BJP, who can I really vote for at the national level? At the state level, I can sort of register some frustration. Let me uh, use that as a cue to enter uh, Maharashtra in particular. Uh, the BJP Shiv Sena were in an alliance. Uh, they together had a majority. The Shiv Sena walked away. Uh, the BJP tr did try to form a government. It failed. How is it that these disparate parties, Shiv Sena, NCP, Congress, they fought each other for decades. Uh, what do you think explains their alliance? And do you think it's sustainable? Uh, so, sustainability, I think, is, is, is an open question. I can c come back to that in a second. You know, I think what we're seeing is a historical or recent historical process that is taking place in Indian politics. Um, throughout the 90s and much, many, much of the 2000s, we had uh, states in which the Congress was declining and regional actors had come up. So you can think of states like Orissa, where the Congress has declined, West Bengal, these were places where the Congress party was the main opposition party, and the BJP has come in. So increasingly at the state level, the cleavage is, because the BJP is sort of a central pole in politics, a dominant party in politics, increasingly it is BJP versus the rest. And so it's creating certain kinds of complicated incentives for uh, erstwhile uh, supporters of the BJP from a party perspective, like the Shiv Sena. Um, Shiv Sena is a party that had been in coalition with the BJP. Um, it was felt that, uh, the, I think within the Shiv Sena, they felt the BJP was pushing too hard, uh, minimizing Shiv Sena's role, and they worried about their own party's future. And therefore, we sort of had a readjustment towards this kind of poll. I think, you know, one of the frictions is just simply, you can see it in electoral performance, you know, in, in the Maharashtra elections, the BJP strike rate, uh, the, the percentage of the seats that it won, of those that it contested, is around 65%, and, and, and Shiv Sen is a good 20 percentage points lower. Um, so that creates a lot of friction, right? Because once you have a party that is not even as electorally competitive as the BJP, as its ally, the BJP doesn't feel as much of a need to sort of negotiate on fair terms. Accommodate them. Right. Um, can this kind of thing last? I mean, I think history shows us it lasts for a short time, right? Um, fundamentally, uh, I think coalitions that have zero ideological character, which is what it what happens when you have shifts in the NCP and Congress together, uh, in a very short period of time, they're going to have to change the structure of Maharashtra politics. Otherwise, they won't be able to hold together and things will sort of balance back towards the BJP. Uh, I think what you said uh, in, in the initial part of your answer is interesting. BJP's dominance itself is becoming a problem for the BJP now, right? That's right. Um, I think that's right. I mean, I, I think now when you are a dominant party, then the idea that somehow you have to accommodate coalition partners or that a coalition partner can negotiate with you on equal footing becomes a very difficult strategy, especially when we look back to some of the other strategies I was talking about earlier, the sort of structure of Indian politics, where so much power is being given to the center to be able to directly reach the voter. It's fundamentally weakening the position of your regional coalition actors. And that's going to, that's bound to create friction. Uh, let me move to West Bengal, a state you know very well. You did your PhD on, on the politics of the state. Uh, West Bengal recently witnessed uh, three assembly bipoles. Uh, this is a state which suddenly turned very competitive and bipolar between the TMC and the BJP. The BJP is eyeing the 2021 assembly elections uh, and a victory in that elections. But in all three seats, the TMC made a comeback in a way and won. Right. Uh, what explains this turnaround within six months where TMC is uh, back to being uh, seemingly the hegemonic actor in Bengal? I think it's the same lesson that we've learned from the the recent elections in North India, Haryana, Maharashtra, you know, Rajasthan, Madhya Pradesh, Chhattisgarh. State elections are not national elections. Bipoles are complicated, right, in that they sometimes take on the character of state elections, even if they are uh, for national seats. Uh, 
I think a couple of things. I do think that the TMC is rehabilitating itself. Um, it had moved to a particularly dark corner, I think, in 2019, and the BJP capitalized on that. The BJP capitalized on it in West Bengal by playing um, a certain kind of identity politics, which actually shows you its flexibility. Unlike what it does in other states, it captured a base of scheduled castes and scheduled tribes in West Bengal, and they are a very large percentage of the population, and therefore were able to break into the state in, in, in a serious way, particularly in the western part of the state and the northern part of the state. Um, I think you're seeing some correction from, uh, from the TMC, and what is hurting the BJP is they still don't have that strong state-level face, Bengali-speaking face, and you can see that much of Mamta's new rhetoric, which is pretty, very much coordinated, as we know, she has a new campaign manager, um, is campaigning around the regional identity of Bengal, right? Um, this is a new tactic, not just in West Bengal, but we actually saw it show up in Maharashtra as well, right? The use of regional identity as a way of fighting back against the hegemony or dominance of the BJP as it tries to break into a state. Is, was NRC an issue in the Bengal elections? The NRC is an issue. Um, it will continue to be an issue. I think we don't fundamentally know for whom and how much of it is an issue. Um, we know that on the borders with Bangladesh, there is friction. Even if it hadn't shown up in the politics of the state, at a local level, those frictions have existed for quite some time. The BJP has been able to capitalize. Now, when we talked about that identity-based connection between scheduled castes and scheduled tribes, it just so happens, especially in the north, many of those areas are consistent with areas in which there's a concern about uh, Bangladeshi migration, be it legal or illegal, right? So it is an issue in that sense. The question is, given how much the BJP has been able to progress in 2019 at the national level, it still needs to actually go another 30, 40 seats more to really pose a reasonable challenge to the TMC in terms of winning the state. Sure. And can it do that? And does the NRC provide that kind of uh, a fill-up? I'm not convinced that it does, actually. Mm -hmm. My final question, we're running out of time. Two important state elections coming up, Jharkhand and Delhi. How important are they for the BJP? And what would the outcome reflect for larger politics? So I think, um, you know, to be honest, I mean, I think the most recent state elections are showing us that perhaps we sometimes, uh, all of us, myself included, read too much into any state election. That being said, I think that when we look at what's happening in the state elections, they are more important for predicting the future for the opposition. See, because when we look at the 2014 and 2019 elections, the BJP performance is so dominant that the only daylight for the opposition is to be able to win state elections. And what we're seeing is that charismatic leaders, strong regional leaders are making a difference and are hurting the BJP. So if I'm an Arvind Kejriwal or I'm a Mamta or, you know, any, any of these states, right, um, these are places in which um, regional leaders do see that this is their option to strike back. And the Congress we see in Maharashtra is actually, and this is different than the kind of behavior we saw in the 2019 election, they've taken a step back and let these regional leaders take the lead and sort of uh, be the face of the opposition to the BJP. So the major questions we have is, is this, you know, the Congress turning over a new leaf and realizing that we need to stay in the game? And so we are going to cooperate with regional leaders and build a larger opposition. And is this regional leaders getting a little more confidence uh, in terms of competing against the BJP, knowing that, okay, maybe the national level will take some time, but the state level, we can really hurt these guys. And if we hurt them enough, in principle, we will have enough to have a united front. And can maybe eventually five pose years, a national ten challenge. years, we can be a national challenge. Thank you so much, Neelan. That was very useful and insightful for us. Please join us for the next edition of The Big Picture. Thank you for joining us this week. Thank you.